All right, it appears that the guys are taking it one game at a time. And are you surprised at all, Donna? I am, Marvin, and I think everybody would look at when the Redskins were three and six, and then they run off seven straight games, and they weren't easy games. You're talking about divisional games where they had to play Philadelphia twice, New York twice, Dallas twice, and then they had Cleveland and some other teams within that mix. But I think the players summed it up best. They took one game at a time, focused on that one game, and I think when they started putting all the pieces together, then they were able to uh, propel themselves uh, each game after that. But it's amazing that the Redskins haven't been in the playoffs since 2007 and haven't won the division since 1999. So that's a big kudos to them. All right. And, uh, you know, talking about putting the pieces together, one of the big pieces, especially since RG3 is a little uh, nicked up, is yeah. uh, Morris. I mean, this guy is really playing well. And he was just named <laughs> player of the week, offensive player of the week. Uh, and that's a big honor for him as a rookie, huh? Yeah, and he had that honor, you know, throughout the year. It's not just a one-time <laughs> deal. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I think, uh, you know, after RG3 got hurt and they knew that they had to go more to the running game, not that they hadn't anyway, but uh, uh, RG3 talked about on Wednesday when I was out there covering the team uh, the fact that uh, they had to rely more on the running game because he wasn't 100%. And he said that, uh, Morris got some hard yards, you know, 80 yards here, 90 yards here. It was some hard fart, fought, fought hard yards in that Cleveland game and so forth. So I think that they uh, utilized that more so in that Dallas game, you know, when he picked up the 200 and some yards because RG3 is not 100%. He's not able to do the things he did before he got hurt. But I think that that's the, what the Redskins have done is keyed in on some uh, strong areas of that team and been able to pull out these wins. And it's amazing. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. <laughs> and uh, talk about this defense. I mean, the defense has really pulled together. The secondary uh, yeah. is playing much better as a group. And, uh, and then the pass rush. They used a lot of uh, pressure on the quarterback, right? Yeah, I, th I think in the last three games, when you look at this defense and you uh, dissect them a little bit, they've done different things in each game because they had to do some things in the Dallas game, and they wanted to D Hall. They wanted to have him one on one on Das Bryant, so they wanted to be able to use the other players to help in other areas, like London Fletcher. He's played good the last mm -hmm. three games. I mean, you know, the interceptions. Rod, Rob Rob Jackson, Jackson has played well. Big key intercept at the mm -hmm. end of that game. So I think that the Even pressure. Richard Crawford. Richard Richard Crawford has the young guys have yeah, stepped up. Yeah, the ones have yeah. got the chance. Mm -hmm. Cedric Griffin will be back mm -hmm. in this game yeah. uh, against Seattle. So the guys have uh, done what they needed to do, and I think that Haslett has done a good job of disguising some things, some weakness in the Redskins defense to help them in the front with the pressure and then then the secondary. But the secondary is the area that has really mm -hmm. turned around mm -hmm. and they play better in that. And I think that's a little bit because they put more pressure up front. But those younger guys have stepped up and played well and they're going to need to do that <laughs> against Seattle. All right. And uh, what about your the offensive line to me has yeah. played well. They've only had one injury. Uh, well now two. Uh, but it seems like whoever they put in there plays well. They have, and that's an area we talk, you know, off the air. We've talked to some other reporters. Mike, my colleague, he said that this is the best offensive line in the whole NFL. <laughs> now, I'm not going to go that far, but I'm going to say that they've played well all season long, and mm -hmm. those guys have stepped up, but they've done a great job with the run blocking because mm -hmm. they've opened up some holes. I think about that run that Morris had in the Dallas game where he cut to the left, and the blocking was so great, and then he cut back and got the mm -hmm. touchdown. Right. So they've done an out outstanding job as far as protecting uh, Robert throughout the season and um, hats off to them too and they're going to need and I hate to say this again because Seattle has a great defense and they're going to have to play mm -hmm. well and they've nicked up but I think that they're um, you know putting the pieces back. Do you, do you think Kyle is helping that offensive line out also because of the uh, all the play action 
it's probably a lot easier to pass block when you're doing a lot of play action and rollout. So. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I was talking to Chris Samuels, the former offensive lineman for the Redskins, mm -hmm. and he said that he wished that he, he could have played at this time with uh, Robert because of the fact that they do a lot of blocking running and everything. So he said that he may come out of retirement. But I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's I may come out of retirement right, now right. for this. But, but I think the play action opens up the running game, and that's the reason why. I, see, I, th I think you see a lot of success there. All right. I tell you what, let's take another, take a break. And uh, Donna and I will be right back with former Redskins, Ron McDowell and Pat Fisher. Some special guests, yeah. huh? Yeah. All right. So don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. 